Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you the best free pre-installed apps that are included with Windows 11. A lot of the value from an operating system comes not just from the core OS capabilities, but also from all the different apps that are included. At Microsoft, we refer to these as inbox apps because they come in the box with the OS, even though you don't really get a box anymore, but hey, the terminology has stuck around. Now, you wouldn't believe this, but the entire process of deciding what apps to include as part of Windows is a very thorough process. A lot of data is shared, and sometimes it could be a little bit contentious. And the reason I know that is I worked on the Office app and I had to make the pitch or the case to the Windows team to include that app as an inbox app. Today, we're gonna look at one app that's being included for the first time. We'll also look at two apps that this time around did not make the cut. I'm sorry for those apps. And then at the very end, we're gonna look at one interesting app that doesn't really offer much utility. It's pretty much impossible to find, but it keeps making it from Windows version to Windows version, and it's making another appearance on Windows 11. And we'll touch on that as well. All right, let's jump on the PC and let's check these out. And here I am in Windows 11, and we're gonna look at a whole bunch of different apps today. But if this is your first time seeing Windows 11 and you wanna know, well, what changed with the taskbar, what's new in the start menu, I've included another video link in the description that'll give a really nice introductory overview. With that now out of the way, let's talk apps. To be able to see all of the different apps that come pre-installed with Windows 11, let's go down to the taskbar and click on the start menu or the Windows logo icon. This opens up the start menu and in the top right hand corner, there's a button that says all apps. This initial view right here, this is only a subset of all of your pinned apps. When I click on all apps here, I can see most of the apps that come with Windows 11. Now I found that a few of the apps that are pre-installed don't make an appearance on this list. So it's not truly all of your apps. I'll exit out of the start menu and to see all of your apps, Let's click on the search icon down below and within the search field, type in add or remove programs and then click on the best match. Within add or remove programs, here we can see a full and comprehensive list of all of the different apps that come in box with Windows 11. And this brings us to our very first app today. And this is one that's appearing for the very first time as an inbox app called Power Automate Desktop. So what is Power Automate Desktop, or what I like to refer to as PAD? Well, it's an RPA tool, or what's known as Robotic Process Automation. If you find yourself doing any type of manual tasks on your computer, where you do the same step again and again and again, instead, you can show your computer how to do those steps, and then it'll repeat those steps on your behalf. The closest analogy is macros in Microsoft Excel except instead of being limited to just one application, you can create automations that work across applications and even including your browser. So let's take a very simple example. Right up here, I can click on desktop recorder and this opens up the recorder. Here I'll click on start recording and now let's take file explorer, I can move the window and here we'll see that it captured that step. Here I can minimize the window and it captured that step as well. Once I'm all done, I'll click on finish. Back within PAD, here I see all of the steps that were recorded. And right up on top, I can click on the run icon and it'll go through and it'll execute all of these different steps. And it's not just limited to basic recording. Over on the left-hand side, you can add things like variables, conditions, loops. You can pull in data from Excel, from email. You could even write to different applications. So once again, you can truly automate just about anything on your desktop. Microsoft used to charge a pretty hefty monthly fee to be able to use PAD, but recently they made an announcement that this tool would be made available to everyone for free and it would be included as an inbox app as part of Windows. If you want to watch a full in-depth overview of how to use PAD, I've included a link in the description down below. Next, let's shift gears and look at some of the apps that have been removed from this version of Windows. And probably one of the most glaring omissions is Paint 3D. Here when I come down and click on search, if I type in Paint 3D, I no longer see that as an option. I still have Paint, but the 3D option is now gone. Although Paint 3D is no longer an inbox app, you can still find it in the Microsoft Store. Simply search for Paint 3D and then you can install it here. 
The one thing I would question though is, I don't know how much Microsoft will continue investing in this experience since it's no longer an inbox app. But at least for now, you can still get it in the Microsoft Store. And another noteworthy app that no longer appears in Windows 11 is OneNote. Here, if I search for OneNote, it no longer appears. Now, OneNote's pretty popular, so what happened to it? Well, here when I click on the Start menu, we'll see that there's now another app here called Office, and this includes things like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And over here on the left-hand side, we can see the OneNote app. So I think this is Microsoft basically consolidating some of the apps and trying to remove some of that app overload. With OneNote, just like with Paint 3D, if you still want the standalone OneNote app, you can search for it in the Microsoft Store, and here you can install it. Now that we've looked at apps that have been added and also apps that have been removed, let's now look at my favorite apps that continue to appear in Windows. And this brings me to my first favorite tool, and this one is the Office app. And I might be a little bit biased, I worked on this when I was at Microsoft. The Office app pulls together and consolidates all of your productivity tools into one place. Over here on the left-hand side, you'll see Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and I have all these other tools. Here when I click into Word, this will drop me on the start page and I can kick off a new document. And this brings us to the next best app and that's the Mail app that comes with Windows 11. You simply search for Mail and then click on the best match. The Mail app is a fairly feature-rich email client. Over here, I see all my different accounts and folders. Here I could click into different emails and I could read up on what's going on. One of the nice things is you have all these beautiful themes built into the Mail app. You can add multiple different email accounts. Whether you use Outlook, Google, Yahoo, you can add all of those into the Mail app. You can even link together multiple inboxes. So this way you can see your Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook inboxes all in one unified place. All in all, the Mail app is fairly advanced and it's getting more and more functionality. So it's getting closer to what you would say find in Microsoft Outlook but it does have some things that it's missing. For example, you can't set up rules. You can't apply conditional formatting. You can't install any extensions. But if you just need it for basic email usage, the Mail app is pretty nice. From the Mail app, we're gonna jump on to the next best app in the bottom left-hand corner, and that's the Calendar app. Here, when I click on Calendar, this launches the Calendar experience, and it's a pretty feature-rich calendaring app. Right up on top, I can shift my view of my calendar. Here I could go from a day view to a week view to a month view. I can make all those adjustments right here. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, I can also very easily add additional calendars. Maybe I'm a fan of the Seattle Seahawks. I can pull their calendar into my calendar. One neat feature is when I'm setting up a new event, there's an option where I can simply include an online meeting. And this will set up Microsoft Teams as the meeting provider. So this way I can meet with my friends or my family. This now brings us to the next best app. And here too, I can also access it directly from the calendar experience. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, I can click on to do. As I click on that, that'll open up a separate app. And with mail, calendar, or to do, you can also launch them all on their own. Here when you click on search, here I could also type in calendar or I could type in to do, and this is yet another way I could launch those apps. Microsoft To Do is a very feature rich task tracking app. If you want an in-depth overview of everything that you can do with To Do, I've included a link in the description down below. That brings us to the next best app. And before you ridicule me for this recommendation, it's Microsoft Edge. And it's the app that's pinned to the desktop as the one and only app on the desktop. So why Microsoft Edge? Haven't they been losing market share for years and years? Well, it's true. And so Microsoft has started investing heavily in it. First off, Edge is now Chromium based. That's the same technology that powers the Chrome browser. Also, because Microsoft has so little market share, they're building tons and tons of features out to try to get more users to use Edge. And some of those features are pretty innovative. As a few examples of some of the features that I really like, let's say that hypothetically, maybe I wanted to buy some cookies from Mrs. Fields. I mean, they are pretty tasty, aren't they? Right up here on the address bar, I can click on this icon and this will show me a price history over time. So this way I can ensure that I'm getting the best deal possible. And this works on all different types of merchants. In the top right hand corner, when I click on the ellipsis, I could also have Edge read this page to me. So maybe I'm studying some material or maybe I'm reading an article. Let me have the computer read it to me. 
And lastly, you could even pin websites directly to your taskbar. So enough of this Miss Fields garbage. I don't wanna order their cookies. I'm gonna click right here on my taskbar and go to the best cookie company. That's right, the Kevin Cookie Company. This brings us to the next best app, and this has been a mainstay on Windows for a long time, and it's the Calculator app. So what's so special about the Calculator app? I mean, you could just do basic calculations. Well, there is some hidden functionality that I really like. Up here in the top left-hand corner, when you click on the hamburger menu, you get all these other calculators, but along with that, you can also run all these different conversions. Here you can convert currencies, volume, length, here's temperature, and the list goes on and on. So if you have to convert something, the calculator is a fantastic go-to app. And this brings us to my last favorite app, and that's the Your Phone app. Simply go down to search and type in Your Phone, and then you can launch the app experience. Now, this is a fantastic app if you have an Android phone. With an Android phone, you could check your notifications, you could view your photos, you can make calls, you could also text back and forth with others. If though you have an iPhone, you can share links between your iPhone and your PC. And it's not really that compelling. I have an iPhone and I don't use your phone. But if you have an Android phone, this is a fantastic go-to app. This brings us to the very last app that we're going to look at today. And this is by no means a favorite app, but it's more of a curiosity. This app has existed in many different versions of Windows, and chances are when Windows 20 comes out, maybe I'll be in my 80s, this app will probably still continue to appear. There's no easy way to access it. When you open up the Start menu, you won't see it anywhere, even under All Apps, even under Add and Remove Apps, you won't see this app. But if you know the name of it, you can get to it. When you click on Search, simply type in dialer.exe and then click on the Best Match. This opens up dialer.exe, and it probably feels like a blast of the past. Right here, it looks like we're back on Windows 95. So what is the phone dialer? Well, it'll dial a phone number. You need a modem installed in your PC, and then you can type in a phone number and it'll dial it for you. It won't establish a data connection. You can't actually talk to the person through your computer once you dial. Instead, you can dial, and then you could pick up your phone and talk to whoever you dialed. So why is this included in Windows 11? I mean, shouldn't this have been removed by now? My hunch is that, well, the app probably doesn't take up very much space, but still, to include it on everyone's computer, that seems like overkill. I think the best explanation is that you likely have some very important customers who rely on this functionality. Maybe you have some government customers or other large enterprise customers who need this functionality, and so it's a non-starter to remove it. All right, well, what do you think of the apps that are included in Box? Should they have included more, or maybe should they have cut some more? And hopefully you don't think they should have cut the Office app. I worked on that, so that'll hurt my feelings. To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.